what we're gonna do today, we are going to watch the Hungry Box documentary, which I just found out existed like a couple weeks ago. I've never seen it, first time. And I wanna apply my big Samus slash Smash brain to figure out why this thing popped off so hard, right? Like, you gotta understand, this video hit about, what is it, eight to nine million views. That is more than the Smash documentary chat. You know that documentary that kind of popped off the entire community? This single Hungrybox documentary has more views. And you might be saying, oh, well, you know, it was because it came from a big YouTuber, uh, Emp Lemon, which I assume stands for Emperor Lemon. And that's why it got so big. Well, it's also the biggest documentary on that YouTuber's channel. So even for their standards, this documentary popped off. And then in the meantime, to spice it up, because this is an hour and a half documentary, I will be drinking some Voodoo Ranger every time there is a pop-off on screen from Hungrybox. Or I could do it every time there is a rest from Jigglypuff shown on screen. Or both? Okay, so it's, a, it's just breaking down a tournament. Interesting way to intro this documentary. Because this... Okay, hold on. All right, chill out, guys. <laughs> hold up, that's two. This isn't weak beer either. To intro it this way, it seems like if they weren't already into tournaments, then what would they find special about this, you know? Like, for example, the Smash documentary introed by, you know, the person destroying the producer's friend now he will try right you everybody can relate to that it's like somebody's hiding their power level especially gamers they're weebs they're all into dragon ball they know all about hiding your power levels and then revealing it it's some animation right so everyone can relate but this is just a tournament an incredible comeback victory hungry box begins to celebrate in front of the stunned crowd but unfortunately for him the celebration oh, was there a he rest? earned is about to be cut very, very short. How many? Yes. Hungry Box what is, is the champion. What is that? Once again. What is that? What is he holding? I'm not sure what that is in his hand. This is it. Hey! Who threw this at me? You saying someone threw that at him? Someone Just threw... because Whoa. Hungry Box won? Just 10 seconds after his victory, a disgruntled spectator throws a raw crab at Hungry Box, narrowly missing his head. In a matter of seconds, Hungry Box is transformed from the most joyful person in the arena to the most miserable. Okay, so this is the hook. This is definitely the hook. This is where you get people. So you talk about the tournament, you you present stakes, you showcase that there are high skilled players and there are established players. So these aren't random people. They're calling them by name. They're talking about them as if they have reputations. And then here though, they hit you with the crap. That's why they picked Pound, by the way, because if you think about it, they could have started with any tournament. They could have even done Evo, which I would argue probably top two best sets of Melee of all time. Hungrybox was in that. Hungrybox won that. And I think that's a genius move because Evo fans already watch Evo. Tournament fans already watch tournaments. Those are the people watching Evo. But normies, they love it when people get crabs thrown at their f***ing head. As far as I know, this is the only time something like this has ever happened in the history of competitive video games. But if it was gonna happen, For now. it was probably gonna happen to Hungrybox. Super Smash Bros. is one of Nintendo's flagship franchises, okay. releasing on every console dating back to Damn. its debut on the Nintendo 64. Despite his vision, Sakurai prepared to field the game with generic fighters, as he never anticipated that Nintendo would approve of their flagship characters in such uncharted territory. Wow. However, much to his surprise, Nintendo greenlit now, the most why would Sakurai event feel in history, that, that Nintendo wouldn't Smash allow, you know, from the people to use their IP? That's so weird. You know how crazy it is that even Sakurai was scared of Nintendo? He's like, they're gonna shut this sh down. I can't do it. <laughs> While developing Smash, Sakurai wanted to offer the player a new experience with each session, and in doing so, created a game with incredibly divergent outcomes, resulting in dynamic, unpredictable gameplay. Yep. But most importantly, a game that's very hard to figure out. 
This design philosophy would serve as the blueprint for the series going forward. And while Smash 64 brought a lot of ideas to the table, the concept wouldn't realize its full potential until its successor, Melee. Wow, what an intro! To make something like that sound so interesting and relatable and appealing. That was a great way to intro Smash, what it is, how it got designed, what the aim was. Shortly after the game's release, local Melee tournaments began to spring up everywhere, mm -hmm. and thousands of players began contending for the title of the best Melee okay, player in the world. they're bringing it all back now. Starting in 2004, Major ah, League Gaming Can I pause for a second, Melee Chad? I got a thought. I got a thought. So this is where the hook lies, right? So you show something to people that might interest them, like a tournament and a crab situation. And then they're hooked, right? They're like, this is crazy. What the f is going on? What do you mean tournaments? What do you mean crab getting thrown on someone's head? Who is Hungrybox? Brings it all the way back. Talks about the game that you know. Starts talking about tournaments and how they came up. So we're hitting 2004. I did not think... 2006 here, but you know. I did not think that I would be revisiting 2004, 2005, 2006 sh through this documentary about Hungry Bucks. As tournaments became more prestigious, so too did the players. Captain Jack, Isaiah, and Azin emerged as Melee's top contenders. Where's Ken? But no early player was better than oh, Ken, there the go. undisputed king of Smash. Oh, we brought it back, baby. Ah, they go into this. Right now we are in uh, the Atlanta. Ah, here's the intro to Hungry Box. Okay. And it's like seven thirty in the morning. It's cold. I'm wearing a jacket, so it's not Florida. Remember game store tournaments? Hungrybox started entering local melee tournaments in the summer of 2007. How do you get 58th in just a place? Few months, he started regularly <laughs> placing in the top five. And by they the played tiebreakers all the way down winning. to 70th? The rise of Hungrybox was indicative of a new generation of melee. By 2010, the old legends of yesteryear had Don't pretty show much me. vanished. Yes. Like most of the old community, Except... they had moved on to new frontiers. The departure of Melee's old generation left new top players the opportunity to usher in a new era. In the January gods. 2010, the Pound 4 tournament would mark the beginning of a period in Melee's history known as the Era of the Five Gods. Mewtwo King's Melee Ascent was due almost entirely to his pioneering research into the game's combat. Yes, Frame Mewtwo data, King was the first of KO percentages, pretty much anybody who was willing to grind. Today was originally discovered by Mewtwo King King's used to be really bad, exploration of became Melee's really mechanics. good through the grind. And for many years, no player knew more about the game than Mewtwo King. And a lot in of top players quit King because they didn't. They thought the it was lame to try hard. And brawl. Day, hey, but who's number eight in the world? The Anybody? Title of best in the world in two different Smash games. Eight, eighth in and the world. Chat. As this accomplishment was, it meant that Mewtwo King's attention was divided. Who's ranked eighth in the world? Games, I'm sorry. Leaving the door open for many to challenge his throne. The second of Melee's gods to rise to power would be Mango, who by 2009 would overtake Mewtwo King as the top Melee player. Throughout the history 2009, of Melee, I felt like that no 2008 was it. Intuitive understanding Pound 3 is when it happened. Mango. Watching Mango perform at his highest This is Mango is Erasure. I'm sorry, Amp Lemon. This is Mango Erasure. Mango, when Mango won Pound, we were already saying he was the best. He had already beat Mewtwo King at Evo 2007. And then he beat Mewtwo King again at Pound in 2000... Wait, was it 2009? Or was it... I think it was 2008. Pound three, pound three. Mango's exciting <laughs> and aggressive playstyle made him a consummate fan favorite, especially through his iconic clashes with Melee's third god, Armada. And last but not least, Melee's new generation would be cemented through the rise of the fifth god, Dr. PP. Hungrybox established himself as Melee's fourth god through his meteoric rise in 2009. And last but not least, oh, they just didn't Melee's say anything about Hungrybox. Then. I guess they're saving the it for the rest of the, of the documentary. God, Dr. PP. Like, if PP was neutral, daily dose Mewtwo King was hard work, Mango was freestyle, Armada was just consistent guys. as hell. Now that we've introduced Hungry Box are, was like a mix what they are. Carrying the title of, God of character and preference and grit. Prestige. And, Smash and like you can see it no nowadays too. So what exactly did Clutch God? That's that's his grit. Send us slowly, mortal. As the legend goes, Melee's five gods would hardly ever lose to any other players. And all were capable of defeating each other in any given. What a cool era, but man! Just how much better and the sad the thing is, it'll never happen else. again. 
In Melee, perhaps no player is more intertwined with a character than Hungrybox and his Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is the most confounding Probably character in all of Melee. She arguably should have never existed as a Smash character at all. Puff is not even among the most popular characters in her own franchise, <laughs> but she wound up in Smash anyway because of her similar character design to Kirby. And the Sakurai Smash 64 Kirby, right? developers would recycle Kirby's character model and animations to fill out the game's so it was out of laziness? final character slot. <laughs> and thus, the balloon... So this right here do unimpressive is what probably hooked rain. a lot of people Combined too, because if you remember growing up game, playing video games with your friends, time approaching other characters. and then they ask you, it's like, oh, you're good at Smash? Play me with the worst character. Play me with setting. Jigglypuff. She's the second Every noob with the slowest in gaming speed, meaning she tends to die thought that Jigglypuff was trash. In the game. With all this considered, it's difficult to imagine this character seeing any kind of competitive success. So to hear He's this person, like, flip it on its head, to, game, to hear Emblem and flip it on its head, list, it hooks people, right? In the they become the interested. Oh, f I got to drink. The premise of rest is quite simple. Hitting the moon deals everything. massive damage and knockback, killing most okay, characters two. at very low percents. Missing the move will stun you for three seconds, oh, that, basically that guaranteeing it your own demise. Scoring a rest is very difficult due to the move's small hitbox, basically requiring Puff to be on top of the opponent's character to connect. But at the highest level of competition, no, 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 the threat no, no, don't of do getting it. rested forces other characters to treat Puff like a ticking time bomb. Rest prevents opponents from aggressively rushing down Puff and smothering her with their otherwise superior attacks. Oh god! It forces other players to back down and keep their distance, as one slip-up could lead to devastating consequences. <laughs> Throughout the 2000s, players would begin to discover the power of Puff, uh, and the character would gradually... Why is there a whole ass Rex segment? <laughs> at number three overall. There better not be a pop-off segment. After Hungrybox and Mangan, the, melee melee the most dominant part of Hungrybox's career was defined by the fact that Hungrybox learned how to destroy Fox. For Melee's community, as soon as Fox, or, uh, sorry, as soon as Hungrybox got that down, more than Fox. Just the beginning, ended up having the most dominant period, at least rankings-wise, that we have ever seen. No one Three years in a row at number one. The metagame for okay, question. So we know that this video spawned a lot of HFAM, right, and the big Hungrybox fan base. Did it also spawn a bunch of uh, Hacks fans? Because this video is putting in a bunch of uh, Hacks credit. I would not be surprised by that. I was Mango's coach during Genesis. This is Genesis 1. And Mango asked me to coach because people considered me uh, a smart player. A wise, old, smart player uh, with a Samus brain. And so I sat next to Mango during each set. This is back in 2009 when mid-set coaching was actually allowed. So I was allowed to just sit next to Mango mid-game and tell him what to do or what he's doing wrong. My style was literally just to encourage and then talk between the game because... Melee is so fast-paced, and there's so many pockets of information flying at you that you can't keep track of everything, and on top of that, have me telling you what to do. I think that would f*** you up more than it helps, right? So I would just be encouraging. I would I would tell him, like, you got the lead. Slow down, right? Like, just simple stuff, the way boxing coaches do, right? So after Mango won the whole tournament, there was a point where you could see it in the second documentary, the second Smash documentary, where Mango had given up all hope against Armada. He was down like 2-0 or 0-2. And then he looks at me and he says, I can't beat him. And I said, no. He pulled a stitch face. That's why That's why you lost. You were playing better. You got, like, you were actually there. You actually have it. And I encouraged him and all that. And then Mango ended up winning the whole tournament. And then he takes... He asked Bobak, the tournament organizer, if he could get $100 of his prize money in single dollar bills. So I don't know how they had singles, but they might have already had it or somebody went to the bank to change it. But they came back and they gave Mango 100 in single dollar bills and then he made it rain into the audience. And then Mango never really said thank you. Mango's not really a thank you kind of guy. He comes up to me and he goes... Hey, did you manage to catch one of the dollars when I made it rain? <laughs> and I go, yeah, I caught like three bucks. He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> and I knew that was his thank you. All right, look, like, <laughs> I don't feel like he owed me anything. 
But I, I, I knew that was his thank you. That's just the way Mango is. Mango's like, he's not a, an earnest thank you kind of guy, but he does thank you for things. I remember, this is my sweet Mango story. This is the last one before we get back into the documentary. Um, when my parents caught COVID, you know, some people messaged me, condolences, etc. Mango being one of my best friends, he didn't message me, but one day I was streaming because I said I was just going to play chess and not think about anything while this was going on. I just wanted to get my mind off things. I go and I play chess and then randomly I get like 30 or 50 subs on my channel. And it's from Mango. He didn't say a word. <laughs> he just gave me a shitload of subs and I knew what it was. It was a, it was Mango's way of saying, dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry this is going on. And that, that's it. And I knew, I knew what Mango meant. I knew what he meant. It was sweet. It was sweet. New generation of yes, the Smash Brothers documentary years, was massive. But without a doubt, and I think it showcased the, most the first time that the, history of competitive the things to love about our scene long years were presented in a Super relatable Smash way Brothers to Mayo normies who ended up falling in love with things too. The I, I swear on everything, and in 2006 I was telling people, as soon as people know our storylines, as soon as they start to figure out that our players have personalities and there are things on the line, when they know our story, we will blow up. We are simply too interesting to not blow up. It is kind of interesting that most, the two most popular documentaries being this one and the, and the Smash documentary. Puff Mane was dealing with more threats than ever before. If the Fox Revolution that they do tend to take the perspective that Mango was a huge problem and a dick. In his most impressive performance of the year, Hungrybox would play valiantly, beating PPMD and finally vanquishing Armada's young Link. Oh, is that a pop? That's a pop off. By Mango, who won the tournament for the second year in a row. 2014 marked True. a year of tremendous growth and change for Melee, but Hungrybox ended the year exactly where he started, ranked 5th. After a disappointing finish at the Big House, some began to question whether he still deserved his god status, or Damn. if it was even worth it for him to continue sticking to Jigglypuff. Fortunately Wait. for Hungrybox, the hold world up, hold of up, Melee up, was hold about- up, hold up. Didn't Hungrybox say that it's been like 8 years or something since he has missed a top 8? Is this the tournament where he missed it? Big House 4 after losing to Lucky? Wow. That's wild. That is a long fucking time. Also, if you didn't know, Big House 4, in my mind, one of the best top 8s of all time. Probably like a top 3, top 8. Nobody talks about the fact that Hungrybox has made a top 8 every single tournament since, what is this, 2014? I am a firm believer that in this scene and maybe in other scenes, if nobody talks about it, then you got to talk about it yourself. You got to put it on people's radars because people pick and choose what they pay attention to. And oftentimes it ain't fair. And so if you got to be your biggest advocate and you got to speak up, because if I didn't speak up about my own results and my own rankings, I would have just been left in the dust every year. I would have been ranked like below 30, below 40 every fucking time. That's why I tweeted. You know why? Because I'm not a cool-ass Luigi like a bait. I'm not a sick-ass Falcon like S2J. I had the results, but nobody would give a fuck unless I talked about it. So I had to talk about it. Hungrybox is the same shit. I didn't know. I didn't even know that he's been hitting top 8 every single tournament. And I know he's been keeping track. So he talks about it, now I know. So I'm just telling you, this is just future advice. I don't know if you ever plan to be great at something and you're recognizing that you're not getting credit talk about it put it out there it's not embarrassing don't listen to none none's always making fun of people for talking about the results don't fucking listen to him he plays a cool ass falcon all right he doesn't understand he doesn't know talk about it that's why i always bring up dreamhack dallas 2019 people gotta know 2015 featured the debut of mr Russell. hungry box where he learned to embrace his role as melee's villain is uh, what determines right. the loser. I don't know if you can hear this in my headset, but like, listen to the crowd. Yo, the crowd is not happy. <laughs> Who are they booing? Hungry oh, because he was like camping. Probably. brazen persona that he used to taunt hostile audiences. And perhaps no other tournament showcased heel H-Box better than All right, this Evo is like hook number six in this documentary row, that would appeal to, to, to the everyman. You have literally the the arc of a person who is vilified, who then embraces being a villain. B 
because fuck it. People are gonna hate on me anyways. I might as well own it. And it's true. Like, I can't tell you how many people have had an issue with Hungrybox winning or how he plays, or myself included. I'm part of that. But you know what? I have to watch. I have to watch. Fuck, arrest. Say what you will. Hungry Box is really good for the game. He is some people's hero, some people's villain, but he's really good for the game. If I have to be, if I have to just like pick a top three, it's Mango, Hungry Box, Leffen are the most important people for the game. And Hungry Box defeats Mango. We haven't seen enough Leffen lately though, and that's kind of been sad. But. Is that Hungrybox yelling? Okay, no, that's a wrestler. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, dog. I mean, oh, that's it. That is it. A few months later, the two would once again meet at the big house, where Armada would double eliminate Hbox, who looked Did no it? closer to solving his <laughs> Hold on, wait, 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 hold up. Wait, 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 I just had a discovery. This is a callback. This is a callback. I always wondered why the fuck does Armada stand up and do the goddamn Richard Nixon. You can't see me. I can't stand up. I'm wearing the hoochie shorts, okay? Like, he does the Richard Nixon. And I'm like, why is he doing that? And I didn't realize that Hungrybox did it to Armada at Paragon. It was earlier in this documentary. Hold on, I could find it. However, as through his video. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize that. I did not realize because there's no reason for there's no reason for Armada be, to be throwing out the Richard Nixon. It's not like he's a Richard Nixon fan. He's from Sweden. But I guess Hungrybox is the Richard Nixon fan. <laughs> Sidetrack, I just didn't know why a Swede was just throwing down one of our ex-presidents, like, gang sign. <laughs> Chat, do you think Richard Nixon would have been a great melee player? Who would Richard Nixon, uh, main? Here's the amazing thing about going through school and working your ass off. You know how many times I did my own homework? I have more Evo wins than I did my homework. <laughs> There's another video on YouTube that intercuts Hungrybox's graduation speech with Mango's high school stories. The juxtaposition here is fascinating. Unlike Hbox, Mango never tried at school. He risked all of his life's prospects to become the best melee player in the world, and ultimately succeeded. That part of Mango's personality represents the spirit of competitive melee as a whole, a community that was never supposed to succeed never supposed to make it as far as they did, never supposed to outlast the other Smash games. And yet, against all odds, they did. Wow, there's a lot Some going on in this recent like session. Some imagine that Hungrybox would still be successful even if he never picked up a controller. This game has been my escape for over a decade from whatever else life offers. And for everyone else, if that's the same for you, I love you and thank you for coming. After moving to America, Hungrybox used what she Melee said. as a way to fit in, as a way to make friends, and as a way to seek refuge from the turbulent environment around him. Anyways, Hungry back Box to the documentary. Hungrybox needed Melee as much as anyone else. His passion for the game is undeniable. But soon enough, he would find that the very community from which he sought comfort and acceptance was beginning to reject him. Like everything else in his life, it only gave him a bigger chip on his shoulder. I know, I'm, I know. <laughs> Sorry, they, Chad. <laughs> they, they, they hurl insults at you and they, they tell you. Yeah, so the, the documentary is clearly uh, in favor of Hungrybox, which is fine. It's a it's a documentary about Hungrybox. Like, that's fine. Um, it does cherry pick. It's not like the, the, the like an unbiased take on everything. It's not. Um But I, I still think that it is valuable to present this side of things. And, uh, for example, I did not know about Hbox's upbringing in any kind of way. And I, I will say, as a person who 
over the years has come to, uh, like, I'm not kidding. Like, year after year, I feel better and better about HBox. Like, I'm at the point where I, I, I honestly, there was a point where I used to dislike him, and now uh, that has been less so for sure. I think, I truly feel like he's improved as a person. What I do not um, consider super valid are the people who uh, just look at this so one-sidedly and in a black and white way and say, wow, Hungrybox is this perfect person because that's what I see on the internet and all these people are just haters. It's like that to me is just as annoying as the people who hate Hungrybox like to the millionth degree with no reason. Like if you have reasons for one or the other, maybe. Okay, but a lot of people tend to just be like, wow, they truly hate him for no reason. There's nothing there. Uh, I don't even think Hungrybox believes that there's nothing there, right? Like I, that's why Hungrybox has improved as a person because he's probably understood that his relationships with people could be better. Or like, yeah, but that's not to say that other people haven't struck him the wrong way, right? I know that Mango's been a dick to him plenty. That's true. Like, that has happened. That's unwarranted also. It's just a complex thing and a lot of people growing up. Like, we do have to understand that a lot of these people started playing the game when they were in their teens. And all of a sudden, they're good at this thing. They have notoriety. They're making money. And they're not exactly well equipped to deal with each other. So nobody in this fucking scene is perfect. Um, so I, I find it a little weird when like people take a hard side like that. But yeah, it's more complex than that. But yeah. Anyway, let's continue. All right, I'm gonna drink because there's gonna be one rest. And then the moment that changed Melee forever. Oh, this is a hook. Oh, this is what gets everyone. This is the documentary pops off here. I guarantee you the YouTube algorithm saw this getting rewinded like seven times. That's a pop off, I guess. Very magnanimous. I have not used that word since the SATs. Okay, does this count as a pop-off chat? Sometimes the only thing you need to win is believing. Like, I think we need to talk about. No, no, hold up, wait, no, like, but this isn't. But he's just—he's sleepy. He wants to lay down. He's sometimes. His hands hurt. He's in pain. He's wincing. His hands hurt. He's like, ah! It's just, it's not the same thing, chat. I don't think. Sometimes the only thing you need to win is believing that you can. In Melee, the difference between... Okay, that's gotta be like a top five... Top three pop-off of all time, so I guess I fucking have to drink. I'll make it a big swig. He's playing charades. You know what's funny? If I was playing charades and my word was pop off, I would, and I was like in a room full of smashers, I would have just been like, hold on. And I just start slamming. You couldn't see it, but I did it. Like they would just know. Well, actually, you know what? That would just cause them to yell out hungry box. I'd be like, H box, H box. So it wouldn't, ah, fuck. Yeah, no, it actually wouldn't help for Pop-Off. I'd be like, and then I, and then I would like kick a chair and then they'd be like, H-Box again. And I'm like, no, no, no. And then I'd slam a CRT and they'd be like, H-Box again. I'm like, dude, they're like, Juan Dibadima. I'm like, no, Hungry Box, no, shut the fuck up. H-God, no, ah, Clutch Box, no. And then I would just lose. There's no, there, I would just lose. I can't. Evo 2016 changed all of that. What and a shot. Hungrybox walked out of that building a completely different player. Chad, do you After think that Hungrybox has did, put this nothing could stop on a dating app profile? The best in the world.
From that moment on, Hungrybox would never be the same, nice and neither would Melee. <laughs> He was this is so like close, the type so of far. shot that Evo never 26. gets you laid. Like, yeah, it's cool, but then someone's going to look at it. They're going to do some inspecting. They're going to be like, wait, it's hold up. <laughs> is that a video game controller? Is that the TV from the 80s? Why is he on his knees? He's not a real man. <laughs> real men don't get on their knees. Yeah, not not a good dating profile picture, I guess. Sixteen changed all of that, and Hungrybox. <laughs> yeah, they got a crop it actually. Yeah, a just completely leave different player. <laughs> After accomplishing what he did, nothing. Yo, can I'm stop fucking him around. From Obviously, I don't believe that. That's <laughs> from that moment on. You ever have everything you ever wanted, and then when you finally have it, you're like, now what? Nah, but I, I, I've <laughs> I've heard that what you're talking about. It's really weird. Yeah. I guess I gotta find more things to want. Yeah, I guess so, man. All right, man. I, something, you'll find it. I'll see you, man. All right, my that, dude. That lied a lot. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, my man Boxy, yeah, my man Loki sounds sunk in place. Like, he's cool. Oh. He said, nah. What's up, homie? And they're like, it's, it's so funny. Like, That's just, so, just the transition. Right, something, you'll find it. I'll see you, man. All right, my dude. Into Brandon talking to Juggle right. Guy. Hopefully, my man Boxy. Like, look at the change in it. My man Loki sounds sunken place. I hope he's cool. Oh, oh, oh. sup, <laughs> homie? <laughs> oh, God, that shit's so funny. I think this moment, it kind of exemplifies uh, some of the issues people have had with Xbox. And I, I don't say this out of hate. I say this out of just, like, um, just interpreting the situation, but, like, it feels like some people feel like he hasn't been genuine in past years. Now, like I said, again, I think he's being a lot better about it. And that, that's why I think you see a lot less HBox hate nowadays. Um, but like in this interview, you can kind of like, I do believe that Hungrybox did feel that way. But there's just not, there wasn't an awareness of saying something like that to someone else where, right, like you have everything you wanted have everything you ever wanted and then when you finally have it you're like now what <laughs> nah but i, I I've... <laughs> um so look that's something you might say to a friend in pre like i i know what hbox is talking about okay sometimes you're you're pining for something in your life and you get it and then you're like, now what? Like, I've been working towards this. And then the realization is that what was actually fruitful about everything was the journey. The learning experience, what you gain from it, etc. Right? Not the end result. That's honestly how I felt about, like, chess boxing, right? Where I worked really hard to win my fight. And then when I won, I was, like, okay with it. Like, people ask me, it's like, dude, you must be, like, feeling real good. I'm like... I'm glad I didn't get knocked out, but to be honest, I felt better about some melee wins than this. Like this was this was very cool, but it doesn't change everything. And I and I and I know that what I loved about that was the journey and learning a new discipline and working hard for four weeks, getting there, getting the victory, etc. Right? So I get the feeling that Hungry Box is expressing here, but to say it on stream to Brandon and in this exact way. It's just, uh, it just feels slightly out of touch. And I feel like Hungrybox has gotten better about not doing these uh, slightly out of touch things. You know what I'm saying? If I could define what some people have had trouble or problems with. Um, but yeah, <laughs> like there's a reason this is funny. And there's a reason that uh, that homemade waffles' reaction is this, right? It's because there's something off about it, right? And it's a little hard to define. And I don't blame Hungrybox for speaking his feelings and then being confused when people, like, make fun of it or laugh or whatever. But I think that this is something that can be explained and can be talked about and that he could understand. And I think he has been understanding as of late because it just hasn't happened lately. Like I, I like again. I, I reiterate, he's been a lot better in the last couple of years. Um, 
But yeah, this is just like, uh, in my mind, a, a, just an example. <laughs> it's, it's still like, regardless of all that, still one of the funniest bits I've ever just seen. That's not farther, a bit, man. but... Yeah, I'm doing what you do. I'm going to watch it one more time. Because you're damn good at it. <laughs> you ever have everything you ever wanted, and then when you finally have it, you're like, now what? Nah, but I, I, I've, <laughs> I've heard that what you're talking about. And yeah. this is how you know that Homemade Waffles is one of the most real people on the planet. Versus the last of the gods. Okay. What am I preparing for? And so we enter the Are we era good on volume, by the way? as the number one melee player, an era characterized by two remarkable shifts in melee, the first of which being the end of the five gods dominating the game. The untouchable status of the gods had been in decline ever since 2016, after PPMD was forced to take an indefinite leave of absence due to medical issues. To this day, he has still not returned to competitive oh. play. But as the I mentioned before, PPMD is adamant about returning. Through 2017, he told me he still got that on his mind, and I believe he will near. be there. No After talking to him at recently. Leffen is our evil 2018 Super Smash Brothers Melee Champion. 2018 saw the year's two biggest events fall to new contenders, with Plup taking Genesis and Leffen taking Evo. Midway through 2018, Armada seemed poised to retake the number one rank from Hungrybox, only to shock everyone by announcing his sudden retirement from Melee Singles competition. Although never explicitly mentioned, many have attributed his retirement to the constant stress he suffered from trying to keep pace with Hungrybox. For me, I feel like if I can't have fun doing it, then it's no no point in doing it. I don't. At around the same time, I don't know Legion if it's King specifically due to Hunger Box. Away Did from Armada Melee say that directly? Streaming and writing his book in 2019, Mewtwo King only competed in four events. Yeah, and Mewtwo King just kind of fell to off too. Not fell off, but just stopped competing. Soon. Mango, no, perhaps the most the dominant point. player ever in his prime, failed to win a tournament in 2018. Damn. And while he can still crank out the occasional epic performance. His inconsistency has relegated him to a shadow of his former glory, placing his god status in serious question. Wow. These days, it seems that Hungrybox is the only god left who can wow. still Wow, are we saying that? Oh, shit. Okay, hold up. Relax. Alone. In his time, there were four others like him. Now, there's just one. I, ooh, I don't, ooh, I don't know about that. Oh, that is... <laughs> Oh, that is a take and a half. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> so that's why Mango hates this video. Okay. So if we go, I think we're talking... So Armada, when Armada quit, boom. Mango was ranked fifth. Mango was ranked third. <laughs> and then we had a pandemic where the whole fucking world was on lockdown for like two years. That is insanely biased. Yeah, no, that is, uh, that is, that is doing some storytelling with, uh, that is some very liberal storytelling. And yes, in this year, Mango was fifth and significantly below Hungrybox where a bunch of others were in between, but that's not to say that Mango fell off hard. And, and even then the summer of 2019 is as bad as it got. Then like literally just hop right back into the third. And also the documentary did not really dive into Leffen's impact and the fact that Leffen was destroying all five gods where Leffen being number two would make a whole lot of sense in any given year. So it, it kind of, yeah, it kind of went crazy with the bias there. Nothing Armada faced ever came close to the amount of bitterness and vitriol that Hungrybox tolerates on a regular basis. His eternal reward for struggling and clawing to Melee's top rank is to be perhaps the most ostracized top player of any game ever played. At least perennially hated teams like the Patriots can return to their home crowd and be cheered. It doesn't matter where Hungrybox goes today. Nobody cheers him. He can never be applauded for his achievements. Many in the melee community say he deserves the hate. In yeah, I can see how this spawned like a he's big game, supporting group. Many are for quick sure. to express their sheer disgust for Hbox as a person. They like to assume that everything Hbox does has some nefarious self-serving plan behind it. 
It got bad enough to where Hungrybox couldn't even look at his watch on stage without facing backlash and drama. It's as if Melee people have such a low opinion of Hbox that they couldn't give him the benefit of the doubt that he may have been running late for a flight and wanted to keep track of the time. It doesn't matter how much he reforms his <laughs> actions and attitude today. Hungrybox has always been held to his lowest standard, and he's never allowed to overcome his past reputation. Perhaps the community's apparent zero tolerance policy for rudeness and ego would make a little more sense if I'm they trying also to get out of the shot chat. I just who publicly can't go that disrespects low. other players, games, and communities on a weekly basis. Hello. But alas, Leffen, like every now, other player, hold on, player, chat. I can explain. Wildly over Hungrybox. After reads like this, so I mean, this I didn't realize this might be why I have excuses. like a, like I had a brand day, new really set of haters like in during the pandemic. For the same reason they always have. <laughs> It doesn't fit into their idea of this might have been it. Fact, okay, it look. All right, look. Okay, Hungry Box is a theatrical dude. He's a thespian, okay? And I, I thought there were some theatrics going on. I was wrong, okay? I was wrong. All right? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right? It wouldn't be the first time there were theatrics involved, okay? I'm sorry. That's on me. Much of the Smash fandom can't even comprehend the reasoning behind turning off items in tournament play. When Melee was removed True. from the evil lineup in 2019, many people celebrated, saying that Melee no longer deserved the spotlight. Yeah, Lots just of people a bunch in of the NPCs general and fighting bots. game community believe that Melee never deserved the spotlight it got. The Smash Bros. Oh. franchise and Nintendo believe that Melee deserved the spotlight. I don't know if the FGC feels that way. I think the FGC is... Saying well, I mean, like, okay. Melee so, like, the, the, the shitheads, maybe. Many people celebrate... The haters. ...saying that Melee no longer deserved the spotlight. Lots of people in the general fighting game community believe that Melee yeah. never deserved the spotlight it got. No one the was Smash any kind Bros. of... Bros. franchise and Nintendo games in general have been stigmatized as kids' games ever since they censored blood in Mortal Kombat. Many traditional fighting game players don't respect competitive Smash for this very reason. They can't take a game seriously if it was never intended for serious play. Uh, because yeah, they can't uh, take a game seriously if it this was... This is like... I think this is off. Like, I don't think that you could approach any kind of professional at a fighting game and they will tell you that Melee doesn't deserve respect. I think... Like, I, I can't think of anybody, to be honest. What what I think Emp Lemon is trying to say is that the Omega casual audience, not competitive players, maybe low-level players, whatever. Like, so when people are at the... <laughs> when people are at the bottom rings of society, they tend to hate upward, right? So, like, the people that sit there and hate on Smash are usually people that are just failing miserably in whatever game they're playing. That's all. That's typically how it works. But even then, that's not the majority. I think the majority of people love Smash and they support it and they respect Melee. At least the people that are in the know of esports in general. And Smash is an esport. Um, and then when you look at the tippity top, if I had to wager a guess, I'd say like 95% of the people at the top all have respect for melee. It's like I just can't imagine they don't. Like it's like asking someone, do they respect StarCraft Brood War? It's like, yes, of course. Right? Like, even if I don't fully understand it, you have to fucking respect it. So like as like people respect chess, they respect Brood War. I think people respect melee. For sure. I think this is a little disconnected and I feel like it's focusing on the the loud minority. No, but he did say competitive players, and I would argue that those people don't count because <laughs> they're not doing anything. The people that are doing anything. Respect competitive Smash for this very reason. They can't take a game seriously if it was never intended for Also, this is kind play. of a reach. Because Smash like, is a this isn't the reason. casual friendly game, the FGC likes to assume that it's easy and claim that competitive Smash players don't have the skill to lace their boots. Like, this isn't the reason. This is the... Okay, I do understand that some people might have this argument, but the actual reason is because they're sad and they're unhappy with themselves. <laughs> because they're, they're unhappy with their own lack of success. Uh, not because they actually believe that the game is easy, but 
But I, some people do say this kind of shit. Okay, that's fair. As long as Smash that's players fair. It don't is have a documentary. You have to be entertaining. You have to push it up. Quarter oh. circles. That must mean that their controls are crude and basic, and that you don't need to put in any real effort okay. to win a Smash tournament. All this sound familiar? Well, that's because Melee sees Hungrybox how the rest of Smash sees Melee. Oh. The fighting game community treats Smash how Melee treats Hungrybox. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> Okay, I see. I see the connection. What Amp Lemon is saying is that people treat Hungry Box, people in Smash treat Hungry Box the way that the FGC at large treats Melee. That's that's not true. Okay, I'm gonna let it play out. Y'all are telling me to let it play out. Okay. You may not want to believe it, but Hungrybox is Melee in the most literal sense. I mean, yes. Both spent years being told they weren't good enough, that they would never achieve what they would eventually become. Okay, I didn't mean it like Both that. Both were constantly disrespected, stigmatized, and ridiculed because they didn't quite fit into what others thought they should be. Both were able to succeed even though everyone else wanted them to fail. Both have a huge chip on their shoulder because no matter what they accomplish, how many challenges they overcome, and how much they prove themselves, okay, they will I never get the respect they deserve. I see it. In the countless, endless online arguments between the FGC and Smash, Melee fans will always defend their game by saying just because it's different doesn't mean it's easy. Every time this happens, Hungrybox just shakes his head and sighs. <laughs> okay, it's hard for everyone. <laughs> easier for all right, a little bit of a reach. Fox, just it's all hard to win tournaments. But I get it. It's a, it's a simple way to. Hungry box is melee. It's a simple pill to swallow. And you know what else? Hungry box is the best in the world. In present day melee, the gods are the old generation, and Hungry box is the last of the gods. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Uh, has Mango seen this on stream? Is that how you all are saying that Mango hates this? Oh no. What's funny is that, th like, this is also, believe it or not, this is a hook. This is one of the reasons why it is a compelling documentary that got so many views. It's because, like, you, ju you just start from the beginning, right? You paint this picture of a person going through a tournament who gets a crab thrown at him, right? And then you establish what Smash is, you establish the five gods, you establish uh, Hungrybox's presence within that. And then you establish how he was vilified and ridiculed. And then you establish how he became dominant. And then to add to that, you establish that he's the only one left. It's not necessarily true. But you're giving him essentially the ultimate anime hero arc. The comeback arc. And people love that shit. So it's just there's no way that people are going to watch this and feel nothing. Especially the people who know nothing. Like, if I was completely uninformed about the Smash scene and I saw this for the first time, I mean, yes. I would buy it. And I'd be like, yo, fuck those guys. I'm a Hungrybox fan. Don't, don't clip that. I would say, like, yo, like, you know, fuck Mango, fuck Armada, fuck Leffen. I'm an HBox fan. H fan for life, baby. Don't clip that. But I'm just saying, like, that's just what I would think if I just never saw this video in my life. And I don't see how you get around that. Nobody would literally just watch this and be like, hmm, I don't know about this one. I don't know about this take. The only people that say that are the people that are already in the know. And if a video gets 8.6 million views, most of them are not in the know. These are all brand new people. And it makes so much sense why this video just exploded HFAM, his stream, his fan base, all that. Of course. This is really good for that. Yeah. As a content creator, I can't imagine making something this good and this elaborate. This was very, this was an hour and a half. It was meticulous. I don't know how many people Emp Lemon has working on their team, but this is very impressive. Now, I do believe that... Some of it was a little biased, but these this is me being nitpicky. I still think it was a very good documentary. Furthermore, I'm grateful that it probably brought a lot of people into the scene. Take care. Thank you for watching. I'm peacing out.
Good night.